And welcome to a new year of Upon Further Review. I'm Josh Aubrey. Plenty to get to. Uh, some things from a couple weeks ago and some things from this past week. We'll begin with the Georgia Southern signing class for football for 2018. Of course, the Eagles last year had very little to uh, celebrate at this time as far as their signing class and then had a pretty strong one in the February class. This year, most of their bulk of their signees came in December and they had 19 and we had a chance to talk with head coach Chad Lunsford about this year's signing class and have some video of some of the signees that will be coming up for you in just a bit. We also have plenty of high school basketball. The Bullock Academy boys basketball team right now, uh, one of the better stories in our area. They've only lost one game on the season. We'll have highlights from them from their holiday tournament. Also, we'll have some from the girls as well. As for the Statesboro Blue Devils, the girls won a tournament up in Evans. They remain undefeated 15-0 on the season and are ranked in the top five in the state in all of 5A. As for the boys, no slouches either. They won their Gentlemen's Classic holiday uh, tournament. They won all three games that they played there, two in pretty lopsided fashion, and then had to hang on to beat Richmond Academy in the final game of their tournament. We'll have highlights of that. The Blue Devils currently 12-3 and on the season. They also had Southeast Bullock picking up a couple of victories over the past couple of weeks. The Portal Panthers have kind of hit a skid. They've lost six of their last seven. Uh, we'll have highlights from Statesboro and Bullock Academy, as well as hearing from head coach Chad Lunsford on this year's signing class. We also had, speaking of signing, we had a local signing. It was on the softball field, though. We'll go out and see where... Mackenzie Wilkerson will be heading. All that and more coming up in just a moment. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888 or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. The Medical Center Pharmacy on Grenade Street is proud to be your Health Mart Pharmacy in Statesboro. The Medical Center Pharmacy, locally owned and serving this community for 50 years, is open 364 days a year. The pharmacists at Medical Center know there's nothing more important than your family's well-being. That's why they take the time to know their customers, explain their medications, and answer any questions. The Medical Center Pharmacy, your Health Mart Pharmacy. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Well, the Georgia Southern 2018 season may be over, but we're going to take a look back at the 2018 signing class. Had 19 signed, quite a few offensive linemen, a few from the secondary. We have a pretty impressive transfer coming over from Oklahoma State and a couple other skill position guys. Let's get out and hear what head coach Chad Lunsford had to say about this year's signing class. Very excited about this class. Um, what I'm really excited about this class is we had an opportunity all year uh, with our coaches to really do our homework, to really evaluate, uh, to try to go find the George Southern man in each of these guys. And uh, these guys are really good fits. They fit our offense, our defense, and uh, they fit our program. And uh, very excited about them, looking forward for, uh, to get them here. We got several that will be reporting mid-year. Uh, and then we got, you know, obviously the rest that will be coming in the early part of summer. So very excited about them. Looking forward to them being Georgia Southern Eagles. Offensive line uh, was important to us. Uh, we're losing, you know, Curtis Rainey and, and Colbert and guys like that. Um, but also, too, uh, fitting our system. We wanted to really identify some athletic guys 
uh, that had the skill set, but also the toughness and power that we need. Um, you know, guys that are athletic that could play out on the edge at the tackle spot. Um, you know, we we've uh, uh, of kind of already addressed our needs with the interior part and uh, the outside edge part at the tackle was something that was important to us as we went. I thought secondary was very important for us this year. One, you know, losing Sean Freeman and Josh Moon at safety, uh, we're, you know, we're going to need some immediate help there. And we've got some guys, obviously, that are here that'll that'll step up. Uh, but we need some competition there. We need some depth there. So we definitely needed to go that route. And then uh, at our two corner spots with uh, Kendall and uh, Man Man, uh, you know, they're very good corners. And going into their senior year, we got to make sure that we're grooming people. Uh, and then also have depth there also. So I thought it was very important we did that. But length and athleticism was something that we really targeted. The, the running backs uh, were guys, you know, if you look at Gerald Green, uh, he's a guy that really put up some impressive numbers this year uh, at the high school level. And uh, he's a guy that has juice. He's a guy that has uh, power. Um, I think he definitely fits the mold of a Georgia Southern running back. Uh, and then the ability to have, uh, you know, to get a transfer in J.D. King, uh, I think that's really big. I think J.D. King's a guy uh, that can come in and, you know, he already knows how college football works. Uh, he's a guy that will, you know, add immediate leadership uh, to our program. So very excited about those two. And then Jaden Jenkins, our quarterback, um, he's, he's a guy that we, we targeted early. Uh, we saw him in the spring. Uh, did a tremendous job there and uh, got him on campus a good bit, spent time with him and his family, like we did all our recruits. Uh, but, uh, you know, just trying to make sure he had that it about him. Uh, anytime you sign a quarterback, you got to have a guy with the it factor. And uh, he's really demonstrated that. And uh, when you look at his senior season, uh, he had a rough start to start off his uh, high school year. But uh, I believe, and I may be wrong on this, I believe after an 0 2 start, they went on a long run, uh, maybe 10, 11 games straight where they won. And uh, he was a big part of that. He was the focal point of their offense. So, um, and then watching him play as a senior, uh, he really grew as a leader, he grew as a player. Um, and I think he's a guy that could come in and compete right away. The evaluation piece is what's really big for Georgia Southern. Uh, I think it's very important that we go out and we find guys that. Uh, fit what we're doing here. Um, you know, we talk about it all the time about uh, not being sexy but being blue collar, and we got to go get guys that want to work, guys that have a chip on their shoulder, uh, guys that want to prove that they are good football players. And I think we did that, and our coaching staff did a tremendous job of going out and finding those types of guys. Um, and then the recruiting piece, obviously, is evaluation to start with, but then the relationship piece. Um, I think that's real big. You got to get to know the kid. You got to get to know the family. Uh, you got to know the people that are important to them. And then you got to get them around our players. Uh, I, I take tremendous feedback from our players because I think it's very important that those guys do fit when they get here. So, um, you know, there's a lot of different things you got to look at in recruiting. And I think we do a good job of trying to be thorough. I've been at places before where you paid attention to stars. And um, it can end up being very good for you. Um, it, it can also end up being very bad because it does come down to fit and making sure it fits with your current players, it fits with what your philosophy is. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't looked at any rankings this year. I haven't looked at any stars. Uh, when I look at a guy's tape, uh, I watch his film. I don't look up what offers he has. I don't look up who's recruiting him. Now, when you get into recruiting and you decide you know, who you're going against. Yeah, you got to know that. Uh, but when I initially eval somebody, I don't even want to be uh, tainted by looking at that. That's not what's important. What's important is do they fit here? Do Can they do what we can do? And can they compete at a high level? Well, I, I do think last year's class was a good class. I really do. I, and this is not to take away from them. Um, I think this class is more uh, built on what we're trying to do here. Not necessarily that the guys last year don't fit that. It was just we were able to put more homework and more time into these guys. Um, regardless of what we were ranked last year compared to what we're ranked this year in the recruiting, um, I see us continuing to upgrade. My philosophy on freshmen, it, we're going to give them every opportunity to play as a freshman. Uh, so we, you know, we've got seven, I believe, coming mid-year. Um, possibly eight, I'd, I'd have to recount that. But those guys right there are going to obviously get 15 practices um, 
you know, during spring. And that's going to give them a leg up on the remaining freshmen that are coming in. But when I start talking about freshman playing time, I tell those guys all the time, you're going to have the opportunity to come in compete. I'm never going to tell them they're going to start or anything like that. I think they got to come in and earn it. Uh, but we don't have to talk about the four game rule because they're going to get their opportunity. Then if they're, you know, if they're not ready and they need to red shirt, we'll look into the four games. If our guys come in in January when it's time to report to school and they've got the big head and they think that they've arrived, uh, they're sadly mistaken. Uh, there's plenty of things off of this season that we can teach off of. Um, we snuck up on some people early. Um, and then when we got the target on our back, we, we slid a little bit. Our guys did a really good job of responding and finishing the season. Uh, we didn't always play great on the road. Um, you know, we wanted to win every game at Paulson. We didn't do that. Uh, we wanted to win a Sun Belt Championship. We did not do that. So there's plenty of things that we need to do. And it, it, this was a great season, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, and I'm not taking away anything from that. But our guys need to understand what it is to be at Georgia Southern. They need to understand uh, the expectations. And, you know, you look at our schedule next year, it's a, it's a difficult one. And uh, our guys need to understand that. And we've got to understand that we're going to have to bring it even more next year. We've got to learn how to play with our target on our back, and we've got to learn how to play better on the road. Technically, this is the 2019 signing class. Of course, it's happening that most of them were signing in 2018. Still a few left to go in the February signing class as well. All right, well, stay with us. Coming up next, we'll hit the high school hardwood. What does it mean to have financial freedom? At Queensboro Wealth Management, we're helping people figure that out. And giving them a plan to get there. If you have a desire to take control of your finances and live with financial purpose, we, we, we will use every bit of our knowledge to help you. And there's no cost to get started. Download a free kit from our website, then give any of us a call. QWM is Queensboro Wealth Management. Let's begin today. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro, providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998 providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy, in-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests and ultrasounds, in-house lab. And introducing our new nurse practitioner, Melissa Beasley, as we now accommodate same day or next day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro, where we care. Well, the Statesboro Blue Devils were hosting their annual Gentleman's Classic. They had teams from all around, one from Florida, a couple from the area. Statesboro playing in the, in the tournament Islands, Dunellen from Florida, and then they wrap things up with Richmond Academy from up in Augusta. Let's get out and take a look at some of the highlights. Statesboro High opening up their Gentleman's Classic Wednesday, hosting Islands out of Savannah early on. Devin Michael. In the paint, gets the friendly bounce. Later, Zarion Griffin goes baseline and hits the floater. Next, off the steal, Griffin finishes nicely. Islands will try and keep it close, but the Blue Devils were in control in this one. Off the miss, Michael hits two more. Next, off the nice outlet pass, Michael with another layup. He finished with 26 points. Fred, Adam, Fred Adams finds the bank open late as he hits the three. The Blue Devils up by 14 at the half. In the second half, it's more of the same. Griffin hits for three more of his 30 points. Next, Michael with a nice low post move. And then off the steal. Griffin finishes, Statesboro on a 14-2 run. Griffin there with some nice moves a little bit later. Next in the open field, another nice move by Griffin. Jacoby Edenfield heating up from long distance as he drains a couple of three-pointers. More from Griffin as he goes in for another layup. Jalen Hicks in, in for the easy two. Michael then 
Off the pass for the jam. More for Michael in the open floor with another slam. And finally, it's Flip Dixon with the slam as Statesboro wins game one, 90 to 52. Moving ahead to Thursday night and the Blue Devils taking on Dunellen from Florida. We pick things up in the first and Zarion Griffin continues to stay hot, getting the basket and the foul. Next, Joe Burns pulls up and knocks down the three pointer. Burns then draws the contact, flips it up off the glass, somehow gets this one to go. The visitors will try and keep it close, but as was the case in the other game, this one was all Blue Devils. Griffin for two more. Michael then penetrates for the hoop and the foul. More for Michael as he gets this one to fall. Then Kobe Altman will dial up the three-pointer. Statesboro by 12. O.J. Reese gets the bucket and the foul. 34-24 Statesboro at the half. We move to the second half. Coach Hill continuing to like what he sees. The inbounds to Altman. Jalen Hicks held to just one point in the first half. Explodes for 18 in the second, including a couple of threes. The Blue Devils pulling away from visitors as Griffin goes underneath for another layup. Michael with two more. The fast break fest continues. Griffin again. Next, Joe Burns goes flying in for the layup. Michael with the pull-up jumper. I mean, Hicks with the pull-up jumper. Michael with the finishing touch. Statesboro rolls 78 to 60. We move to the third and final game Friday against Richmond Academy. No surprise, Griffin starts things off. Next, Altman with the corner three. The man in his face. Then on the break, it's Michael with the easy two. Michael then finds Joe Burns for three. Statesboro up 32 to 17 at the half. In the third, more of the same. Hicks, two more of his 18 points. Griffin then spots Michael inside. The Musketeers eventually cut the lead to five. But Statesboro able to hold on. Burns inside for two. And then check out the moves by Griffin. He'd have 19 points. And Statesboro wins 59 to 54. Well, up next, the boys and the girls get back to action. On Friday, the boys will be taking on the defending region champs in New Hampstead. Stay with us. Coming up next, we'll head to the Holiday Classic over at Bullock Academy. No Credit Refused isn't just an offer, it's a way of business and has been for over 100 years. No banks, no ridiculous credit requirements, just local Badcock store owners who treat you right and give you credit when others won't. It's never been easier to express your style and love your home. A sports injury can stop you in your tracks. At Optum Orthopedics, our specialized physicians and staff use advanced orthopedic procedures with one specific goal in mind, to get you back to you. If you have a sports injury, request an evaluation. Experience the Optum difference. Visit us locally here in Statesboro at Piedmont Loop beside Walmart. Well, the Bullock Academy Gators hosting their holiday classic this past week. Unfortunately for the girls, they were only get, able to get in one game as they had a forfeit in the first round 
of the tournament for the boys. They got a couple of victories. Let's get out and take a look at some of the highlights. The Bullock Academy Gators opening up their holiday tournament hosting St. Andrews. A slow start in this one as Peerless Brown hits the three-pointer. The Saints able to keep things close. And the score was only 8-6 to six Gators after one quarter of play. In the second, things pick up a bit. Don Aaron on the break. Next, it's Matt Childers with a nice hesitation move for two. Then Childers knifing his way inside as the Gators take a 26 to 23 halftime lead. Second half and B.A. pulling around away. Brown, two more of his 19 points in the game. Childers hits the floater and would have 12 points. Finally, nice ball movement inside to tie Mingle as B.A. rolls 53 to 40. The Gator girls in the championship game Friday against Citizens Christian. Casey Ricketts hitting inside. Next, it's a nice feed from Reagan Ellis to Abby Newton for three. Ellis continues to drop dimes as she finds Ricketts for two more. Ricketts continuing to fill it up. She'd have 16 points. Newton then on the break avoids the contact for two more of her team high 20 points. Newton continues to stay hot. Hitting another three. Next it's Ellis burying the three. She'd have 11 points. Newton will then spot Ricketts inside for two more. And then check out the nice Tip pass coming up from Ellis to Leah Williford. And then just before the half, Madeline Cowart plays beat the clock. B.A. up 40 to 18 at the half. Second half, the Gators cruising along. Ryan Boykin off the glass for two. Ellis then spots up for another three. Abby Newton liking from the outside as well. And she'll pull up and hit. And finally, it's Ellis to Cowart as B.A. wins the championship 67-38. to The boys playing CCA in their title game as well. And Peerless Brown start things off with the three. Next, it's Brown off the steal, bringing the crowd to their feet with the slam. Another steal, and it's Childers for two. CCA hanging around early on, keeping it close, but B.A. pulls away in the second. Aaron, two of his 13 points in the game. Next, Aaron driving in for the tough two. Brown breezes in for two more of his game-high 29 points. And finally, Brown with a nice pull-up. Three, and the boys complete the sweep, winning 72-55. And up next for Bullock Academy, they'll be hosting Trinity coming up Friday with the girls getting things underway at 6 o'clock. Stay with us. We'll wrap things up in a moment with a signing over at Statesboro High. Friday night lights to early morning deer stands. Anderson's General Store in Statesboro is your tailgating and hunting headquarters. Boots from Ariat, Georgia Boot, Irish Setter, Wolverine, and more. We have a pair for you. Check out our Costa and Ray-Ban sunglasses and apparel from Columbia, Carhartt, and Drake. Dove, ducks, deer, we have all your hunting needs. And tailgate with a big green egg or Traeger grill, pack in the flavor with delicious sauces and rubs. Haul it all home with a utility trailer. Anderson's General Store, a general store and so much more. Well, no football signings this uh early signing period for our area teams, but we did have one signing in softball. No big surprise that Mackenzie Wilkerson is going off to play softball in college. She's hit over 400 in her high school career as a catcher at Statesboro High, and she'll be carrying on her college uh, playing days up in Swainsboro. I'm very excited right now. Like I'm excited and proud of my decision to go to East Georgia. I'm really glad I chose East Georgia because it's close to home and it's something 
that I like. Like I'm good with East Georgia, with the junior college and everything. And I'm just glad my friends and family are here to support me and everybody was okay with my decision. It was a very great day, it's a very great day. Yeah, I do know a few of the players that went there, they all like it and I'm excited to be able to play with them again. For some of them, they played Fury and then to be able to play with some of the people that I've always played against is gonna be good, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like it. And that'll wrap it up for this week's show. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.